thinking about wearing my jacket from Bates Motel. This was a piece of the wardrobe. It was uh, Kenny uh, Jones. Kenny Johnson, I'm sorry, wore this. Should I wear this or no, babe? Hey, welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. I'm Ethan Van Skyver, and uh, this is Green Lantern Corps Edge of Oblivion number one. This is actually the variant cover um, done by the great Ivan Rice, uh, who pitched into, I think he was doing Aquaman at the time, but he returned to draw characters that he had become known for uh, for drawing as a, as a favorite of this book. This is fantastic. I love Guy Gardner here. Um, I couldn't find a copy of my cover. <laughs> so we're going to do this one. I, I usually like to show every variant cover if I can. Um, but, you know, we're talking about my dwindling supplies of comics here. Um, this guy here is the uh, infamous um, frog lantern that um, Jeff and I created back in Green Lantern number four, I think. And I can't remember his name. But I draw him all the time. And people always ask me, like, is that Cyber Frog? No, no, it's a different guy. It's a different character. Here's Salak, who I also like, but I draw his head differently than uh, everyone else does, and I think you'll see that in this book. So let's crack this open. Oh, um, Tom Taylor wrote it. Uh, me, here's me, Ethan Maskiver, and then Jason Wright is the colorist. Now, um, oh, I should talk about the background of this book a little bit more. So, you know, I've been trying to uh, work my way back into DC's uh, good graces in terms of uh, being on time. And uh, I'd been late for a lot of things. I blew a lot of projects after my divorce. And so it was just like a slow kind of um, build by just meeting little deadlines on little projects and just showing that I could do it. Um, uh, by this time, you know, uh, I'd, I'd pretty much proven myself. And I had a meeting with Bob Harris at um, Baltimore Comic Con, I think. I remember being in some restaurant with him and him talking about doing this Green Lantern book, which was called Dying Universe. It's a Green Lantern miniseries. And um, did I tell him or did I tell someone? They didn't like the name. They showed me the pitch for it um, that Tom Taylor had written, but they didn't like the name Dying Universe. And I can't remember if I told Bob or if I told the editors um, to just, maybe we should just call it Edge of Oblivion. And I have no idea where that came from, but it just came out of my head. I don't know if it's a song. Somebody told me it was like two Tom Cruise movies, like uh, Oblivion and Edge of Tomorrow. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, Edge of Oblivion. They loved the title. They went with it. It was just something to show that like this universe that the Green Lantern Corps was currently trapped in, which was an alternate universe, was dying. And they had to get out of there. And, and nobody knew where Hal was. So uh, here's my return. Uh, the first page that I drew of Green Lantern in a long time, and I was so happy. I mean, I'd been drawing some Sinestro issues, um, uh, you know, and that that allowed me to draw the characters. But to actually work on a Green Lantern title was really cool. I was totally revved up to do all six issues of this, and uh, then see what what was uh, next. Uh, here's Mogo. Mogo turns slightly, and then we get a nice close up of. An alien kind of hand with a ring on it. And it is Badge, the squirrel lantern. <laughs> and he is screaming. He's screaming profanity. Um, yeah, this was this was great. And then here's Guy Gardner behind him. Like I'm sorry, but Guy Gardner loves how can you not how can you not be amused um, by this the sight of a, a squirrel who's screaming profanity? So Guy Gardner absolutely loves that and he giggles. And, you know, Badge turns around. <laughs> Look, Badge is a Green Lantern. He may be small. He may be cute. But he's not playing games. So he turns around and he's like, what are you laughing at? And, and Guy just takes... Hey, uh, sorry, you're just... It's hard to take a swearing squirrel seriously. I, you know, concur. Um, and Badge just goes and tells him off. Tells him off. And Guy enjoys it. Like, imagine just having a squirrel squeaking curse words in your face like that. It's great. Um, this was a, a nice chance to draw. Um, I don't know, did they give me a list of the... 
I think he must have given me a list of, of the characters that needed to be there. And then uh, I could add my own if I wanted to. Um, so, you know, everyone's just basically standing around on this desolate planet. Oh, it's not a desolate planet. I'm sorry. They're on Mogo. And uh, they're just bored. They're just waiting for something to happen, I guess. Um, yeah. Here's Arisia. That's not very good. Eh, that hard line on her face. I'm getting warmed up, like, right back into Green Lantern again. This Kilowog's fun. I like him pushing Guy Gardner back and then using one little finger to hold um, Badge back. Just like, hey, you two, break it up. And, uh, yeah, I, I was also really happy drawing this angry. This is kind of, if anything, this is like um, manga influenced, isn't it? Like the little lines uh, of uh, language above his head, like that also look like uh, an expression of like just aggravation. Um, and this whole posture and everything, I, I have to admit, it was, uh, I mean, I don't like manga a whole lot. Like I don't have a lot of, um, uh, you know, history with reading manga, but. I've seen it, and some of it I like. So, so there you go. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, so this was a good chance to draw Simon Baz, too, which I had not yet done. Uh, Simon does kind of feature in the story a little bit, so uh, I did get a little practice with him. Uh, here's Salak. This is what I was saying about a different shaped head. Like, Salak's head is, is very much like a duckbill dinosaur to me with these kind of, uh, um, you know, little knobs coming out of his, his face here. Um, also, uh, this mushroom guy is just wonderful. And I'm, I'm really bad at names. Like, I know this guy, but I can't remember what his name is. And I've drawn him quite a few times. Whenever I need to draw a character in the background, I'll put him in there. Um, here is uh, the absolutely wonderful um, uh, six two two six two six. Um, really, really cool design. I think um, Billy Tan created her, so she was new. When I was coming back, there were all these new lanterns that had just been created, and uh, they were fun. Yeah, and then so um, yeah, I had to draw uh, this guy meditating here, and I just thought it was cool to just have him. Like this. Look at this. What a cool looking character. Craft Torin. Easy page. Uh, yeah. So Mogo is basically, Mogo's decided that if there are any other lanterns like struggling out there in the universe, he is going to send out a signal. He's going to burn really, really bright. And since he'd be like the only bright thing in the universe at this point, like maybe other lanterns will see his his glow from far far away and we'll come and find him so that is the plan and indeed that's what happens here's a whole other group of lost green lanterns uh including ayalandi goran's son um uh, let's see tomar too and um others yeah i like this so they're looking and she's very pleased to see in the darkness you know very pleased to see what she realizes is friendly light and they all go fine they all head that way pretty good stuff i mean not you know for a, for being kind of rusty it's not bad um and then something's headed towards them look at him it's much larger than i am says mogo and kilowog yells for him to turn out the light but it's too late he can see it and there's this enormous kind of asteroid that's coming into a uh, crash onto mogo everybody uh <laughs> everybody flies up in the sky you can see this is very i should have done this better Sorry, Ava's in the background. <laughs> Everyone flies up into the atmosphere to uh, uh, try to protect Mogo from this incoming space body. And they create a gigantic shield. I don't know if, if one of them could have done this on their own. That's what I was wondering when I drew this. Like, Perhaps one lantern could produce a shield this big um, by his or herself. I don't know if you need like all of them to do this, but maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, you'd have to have a lot of willpower because, look, I mean, basically, this thing just slams into the shield and they're able to hold it up. Don't, you know, don't drop the shield, concentrate. So it cracks, and here comes this dude right here. Um, yeah, this guy, a very scary design. Uh, I'm not sure, oh, by the way, they colored his teeth purple, like his upper teeth there. That's, that's a little pet peeve of mine, but, you know, what can you do? Good splash page introduction of... Uh, this hero or uh, 
maybe not hear a villain. Uh, who knows? Who knows what he's up to? And Kilowog hits him with the gigantic mallet. And slams Kilowog into the ground. And he is going to just crush Kilowog. Look at the lanterns. Like, just trying hard, like, holding back his fist. I know they could do better than this. Come on now. Um, yeah, just, they're not going to let him finish off Kilowog. Uh, good panel here. Really nice. Oh, this is really nice. Yeah, I'm starting to get back into it here. I have to look at that for a little while. Yeah, that's great. And so is this. I like Guy Gardner reacting to the fact that his fist is now, the this guy's fist is now being held back um, by... His sister, his wife, we don't know. I think it's his sister. Uh, we learned his name. His name is Dismas. And she says, Dismas, stop. And her name is Osiris. No, calm yourself. Feel, these are not our enemies, she says. And she gestures to the lanterns floating in the sky. Very small. And then we get a real sense of how big they are. Um, and the, the asteroid thing. Um, which is basically almost like a moon is just hovering behind them. We see little lanterns in the sky and just This might be kind of a ripoff of my idea of for the black lantern capes where they're just scalloped out like like fingers I don't know. I don't know why I did that, but it looks cool. I guess I wanted to do it again um, I sense that you are no threat. You were all of you good creatures and uh, You know, hey, we don't have to fight yeah, this is this is actually really really good stuff. I'm I'm pleased with it looking back. I love Salak. Absolutely love him. Drawing his head from the front is is difficult. Drawing it from the side is much easier. <laughs> and uh, here we meet um, Muck Muck, who is a goldfish, an alien goldfish lantern. And Muck Muck has his doubts. Muck Muck speaks in word balloons that have uh, bubbles on them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're arguing about whether or not they should trust these people. And uh, Guy Gardner, uh, you know, says, hey, you know, listen, uh, I guess they have a, a whole lot of aliens that they're protecting from other planets. And Guy's just like, we don't know who they are. We can't, you know, we can't allow them in here. And, and you know, Simon Bass says, yeah, that's what we do. We have to do it. And Kilowog agrees. And, um... Salak, by the way, disagrees. Salak's with Guy Gardner on this. So, Kilowog and, Sa and um, uh, um, um, Simon Baz, they kind of shut everyone else down. Yeah, oh, this was really, really fun. And they decide they're going to uh, go ahead and, and let them know they are agreed. So, they're invited to the asteroid. Look at the cityscape here. Alien cityscape on top of the asteroid that's protected by Dismas and Alceris. And they fly in, and wow, there are a lot of just civilians that they have been protecting. And, and you know, hey, the whole universe is dying. Uh, so, you know, if they're going to find a solution, they've got to find it together. Um, and hey, everyone, meet the Green Lanterns. Hey, the Green Lantern Corps, they raise their fists, and the crowd goes wild, I assume. And uh, in the meantime, we see that someone is watching this whole thing go down. And doesn't like it a hooded figure so we're gonna learn who this hooded figure is next issue in the meantime poor muck muck is out there patrolling and this happens uh, tentacles grab muck muck by the neck and they oh and they cut his little hand off oh, it's terrible absolutely terrible and dragon his ring comes off and drags him to the earth and Poor Muck Muck, R.I.P. Well, that's what happens sometimes, you know, being a Green Lantern is a dangerous profession and uh, these things, uh, they can result. So Muck Muck is dead and we don't know who killed him and we don't know what's going on with the denizens, the citizens of this moon asteroid mobile kind of uh, environment that Dismas and Asteris have uh, put together and brought into the Green Lantern's world. Um, but we do know that its first uh, sacrifice, its first victim, has fallen, and that's Muck Muck. So uh, this book came out, and I think it was uh, kind of, it was in a weird position because there was another uh, Green Lantern Corps series called Lost Army that I think was meant to go to like 12 issues or something. I can't remember what it was, but it was cut short, 
And then this comic came out. They were going to, I think the idea was, hey, we've got to get the Lanterns out of this universe that Lost Army took place in and bring them back to Earth because the plan is that Hal Jordan is coming back. We're going to reassemble everything for this project called Green Lantern Rebirth um, or DC Universe Rebirth. And so, you know, we want the core on, you know, and Hal all together in our universe, um, everything back to normal before we start. So that's kind of what this was. This was a pivot away from what they were doing towards where they needed to be. Um, and sales, I mean, listen, it, I, I can't remember what it was. I think it was like 33,000. It wasn't, uh, the Lost Army was selling that. And then this came out and it sold slightly higher than that, I believe, but not by much. So, you know, Green Lantern Corps had basically found its audience and the audience was loyal and sticking there. And even to this day, you know, the Green Lantern books sell uh, roughly the same. Uh, there's been a, a slight kind of, uh, decrease, um, very slight. Um, but for the most part, you know, it's like, huh, this is kind of the audience for Green Lantern uh, when we're not hyping up a, a big event. So um, that was kind of mildly disappointing. But at the same time, uh, 35000 I think, somebody could go back to Comicron and see exactly what this issue sold. Um, it was disappointing, but it was, it was still pretty good. It was okay. And in any case, I wasn't here for the... Um, um, sales and to you know do anything like that. I was here to draw my guys. That's all I wanted to do was draw the Green Lantern Corps because I love them so much. Um, so this book was uh, to me um, a joy. And from here I progressed directly to issue two, and we'll talk about that one tomorrow. So this was Comic Artist Pro Secrets. Uh, if you like this video, hit like. Um, please leave comments below, and if you haven't already subscribed, do so. It really really helps the channel. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.